Have you ever heard of the sinner's prayer? Frequently, when discussing what a person must do to be saved from his sins, he'll be told that he needs to say a prayer and ask Jesus to come into his heart. He will be directed to pray what is called the sinner's prayer. Now, though this prayer comes in various forms, it, it normally reads something like this. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe that He died for my sin and that you raised Him to life. I want to trust Him as my Savior and follow Him as Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friend, would you be surprised if I told you that there is no such prayer as this found anywhere in the Bible and that no one in the New Testament was ever saved by saying such a prayer? Now, you might think, well, surely that must be in the Bible because we're told that all of the time. But in truth, it's not there. In fact, the book of Acts, which is sometimes called the book of conversions, contains many accounts of people becoming Christians. But in all of those accounts, none of them said a sinner's prayer. As a matter of fact, none of them were saved by prayer at all. Now, there is an account, however, of a sinner who in desperation turned to prayer. When Saul of Tarsus, who later became known as the Apostle Paul, when he first encountered Jesus, not knowing what else to do, he prayed, according to Acts chapter 9 and verse 11. But his prayer did not save him. Now, how do I know that? I know that because in Acts chapter 22, when Ananias arrived to find Saul, he found him to be penitent. He found him to be a believer. In fact, he found him to be praying. But Ananias said to Saul, And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Now listen, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord, Acts 22, 16. You see, though he was praying, he was still in his sins. Friends, if there was ever a case of an attempt at a, quote, sinner's prayer, this was it. But it did not work. His sins were not washed away by prayer. His sins were not washed away until he was immersed in the waters of baptism. Now, it's sometimes been argued that Acts chapter 2 and verse 21 is an example of a sinner's prayer, that, that it is a command to pray the sinner's prayer. It reads in part, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. First, if this passage is requiring such a prayer in order to be saved, then I have to ask the question, why is there no example of anyone ever doing this? Secondly, let's ask, what did the people in Acts chapter 2 understand that command to mean? Well, the, the fact is they didn't understand it at all. We know that because in verse 37, after hearing this, they asked the question, what shall we do? And then Peter explains to them how to call upon the Lord in order to be saved from their sins. Listen to Peter's explanation. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins." So Peter thus defined calling on the name of the Lord not as a sinner's prayer, but as repenting and being baptized. Now again, Acts 22, 16, Ananias said to Saul, "...and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, comma, calling on the name of the Lord." Friends, the way that he was to call upon the Lord for forgiveness of his sins was by being baptized and washed in the blood of Jesus.